Have you ever wondered what all goes into creating the ultimate pack shot? You know, those photo shoots for packages that create product photos that you see next to the buy buttons of your favorite brand's website. Well, today is that video. This is not really a how-to video on photographing product. I mean, you know, there's millions of different styles of product photography out there. And during this video, I would really only be able to show you guys just one. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I wanna share with you guys my process and my lighting and all that great stuff. But more than that, I, I really just wanna be able to share with you some knowledge and some skills that I, I think you can use in multiple different types of product shoots across the board. Maybe it's not the most you know, glamorous type of photography, but it's an essential one for brands. And if you do it right, it can be a photographer's bread and butter. Now this is Clarif. They make really high-end natural skincare, bath, and perfume products. You've seen them before if you watch this channel, and you're gonna see a lot more of them. Because I'm gonna be doing a ton of photography and video for them, for their social media, their website, print campaigns, a complete brand refresh. But it all starts with creating some really epic product photos for their website. So my job right now is to turn this into this. This is a lot of products. It's hard not to feel overwhelmed by it all. If I was gonna break down this photo shoot into one word, that word would be consistency. More than lighting, more than style and art direction, I have to be consistent in every photo. I have a ton of different products. Some are big, some are small, some are opaque, some are transparent. But my main goal here with this photo shoot is that every photo for every product looks as similar as possible. So what I've done to help ensure that level of consistency is first organizing all of their products. I have everything they make right here on the table. I've organized it by bottle type, transparency, and color. I have all their perfumes over here, serums and creams. These kind of arbitrary categories that I made up here really have more to do with how I plan to light them. And editing. You see, I'm not trying to capture any one of these in a single take. I think with the style of the photography that I'm going for and just how many different types of products I have to photograph, it's gonna be a lot more doable, a lot faster if I try to mass together a couple of images later on in post-production. I think with such a large job like this, you kinda of have to embrace compositing. All of these bottles in this section will be backlit and all of these bottles will have one light on either side. I don't really want to be moving my lights up and down and around my studio between you know each and every one of these products so to save time and keep that level of consistency that I'm going for here I'm going to be photographing these products in groups according to how I'm going to light them. My game plan here is really just to take the first bottle and figure out how I want it to look. I might even do some quick post-production, you know, just to make sure everything is working. But once I get a perfect finalized image, then I'll use that same process to photograph all of the others in that category, like a machine. That's really the second big tip for a shoot like this. If you're gonna be photographing 62 products, you kinda of have to work like a machine on a production line. You know, otherwise you're gonna lose track of where you are and you're gonna lose that consistency. I'm gonna be backlighting all the bottles with the transparent liquid. That way the light passes through the bottle. Okay, so that's good, but you know, I, I really don't like this light spilling on the shoulders and the neck of the bottle. You actually see this a lot in backlit images where the light is creeping around the neck and the shoulders of the product. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. For the style of photography that I'm going for, it doesn't really work. I have future plans other than just photos on a sales page for these images. So this type of lighting is just gonna get in the way of that. So a little cheap trick here to solve this is I've taped up a few small boxes that are taller than the product. I had a few of these lying around cause you know, I don't like to throw anything away, but if you have wooden blocks, then that's actually perfect. But for these transparent bottles, I just went with a good old fashioned cardboard box and some black gaffer's tape. Fast forward a little bit and I actually suggest that you use black duvetine to cover your boxes or whatever they call it in your area. It's a lot less reflective than the gaff tape. I use this later on in the shoot to fight off some of the reflections that I was getting with the gaffer's tape. However, with these transparent bottles, 
This worked just fine to block off some of the light that I was getting on the neck and the sides of the bottle. This is a pretty cheap trick that would work in a ton of different product photography scenarios. And I like using boxes because, you know, I can easily place them on the table where I need them. You can see I placed them behind the bottle on either side, giving me some really nice consistent lighting to the edge of the bottle there. Then I'll create a little hut for the bottle, blocking off that light reflection on the neck and the shoulders, giving me a really nice light through the middle of the bottle. Then I'm gonna place one right behind the bottle, capture a nice image of the bottle cap, and that's pretty much it. I have this bottle ready to edit in four images. Since I have another light here in front of the bottle that I'm using to capture a really nice image of the cap, I could use this light to capture the label as well. However, I'm not really concerned with how the label looks, and in a minute I'll show you why. Okay, the first step here is just to mask out the bottle. I'm gonna use my pen tool. You know, how you create the mask is up to you. You know, whatever works for your situation, but once I'm done here, I'll use that same mask for the other three images. I also have to be very consistent with how I deliver these images. They have to be sized in a way that keeps their proportions similar to all the other bottles. However, this is a later step in the process. For now, I'm gonna shrink it down and, and put it on the final backdrop with a shadow I made beforehand to go underneath. I made this fake shadow on a different test image, but I'll be using this same one on all of the product images that I delivered to Clarif. Now I'm gonna take the pieces that I want to use from each one of these photos. The cap from the last image, a sliver from each side and the middle of the bottle. Then I'll combine all four into one final layer and start retouching the image to make it look all perfect and clean. Now onto the best part of this whole photo shoot. This one thing is gonna save me so much time. And the reason why I wasn't really concerned with how the label turned out during the photography process is because I'm not going to be using that at all. Instead, I'll be using the file that Clarif actually uses to print their labels from. This is gonna cut out so much time and work during this shoot for me. And in addition, it, it provides a much more legible label for the customers on the web. So let me show you how this is all possible. Right now, it's just a flat graphic design. I need it to wrap around the bottle and you know also have similar lighting so to do that first I'll press control or command T to free transform the label then in my toolbar up top here I'll click on this little arc icon or whatever you call it then over here under the wrap down in the drop down menu I'll change it from custom to cylinder now with that it kind of gives me this rounded shape which I'll zoom in here and I'll lower the opacity some so I can see my real label underneath. Then work these anchor points to make the fake label as close to the real one as possible. Naturally, this label wraps around the bottle, so some of this text would be cut off anyways. But you can see it does a pretty good job of squishing and stretching that text to fit the proper perspective. So once I have it as close as it's gonna get, I'll use that bottle mask to create a new selection and then create a new mask on this layer to cut the sides off. Now that I have the shape of the label looking good, the final step in making this label look realistic and saving me days behind the camera and computer is to light the label so it matches the light on the bottle. To do this, I have to create a custom gradient. I'll add a new layer above my label. Then I'll grab my gradient tool, G on the keyboard. I'll make sure I'm on classic gradient and using the linear mode. I'll click into the gradient bar here so I can customize this. I have two points here, the bottom for color and the top for opacity. I'll set my two endpoints to black. I, I don't want that text to disappear, so I'll set the opacity to somewhere around, I don't know, 30%. Since there really isn't any visible highlight other than the bottle cap, I basically want this label to go from black to white to black again, matching the light on the bottle cap. So I'll create another point here and set the color to white and its opacity to something like, I don't know, 60%. I'll control click on this label layer below to get that selection back. Then I'll drag my new custom gradient across my label to see how it looks. Eh, it's a little too much all around. That highlight is a little too strong. So I'm gonna go back up here and, and just tone this gradient down. Maybe 40% for the white and, I don't know, 20% for the black points. I'll drag it across again and yeah, it's looking better now. I mean, it's gonna take a few tries to get the position of the gradient right to get that perfect opacity. I want this highlight to start at kind of the beginning of the text on the label. But once I have it all perfect, 
I can control click on this bottle mask to give me the selection of the bottle, then create a new mask on this gradient layer to cut off those sides. I'll have to create a new custom gradient for each bottle, but it does a pretty good job of making this fake label look real. Another little editing trick for product photography with liquids like this, and it's probably more of an artistic choice more than anything, but create some custom brushes. Now this is not really a requirement for this shoot. You know, I just thought it might be a nice touch. I'm not gonna go in depth, but pretty quickly. I created a few different custom brushes that looked like bubbles, which, you know, was pretty fun to do. But once I had them saved, I could select the paint color from the color in my product and apply them wherever I want. Now why I think this tip about how I edited the label is such a time saver is, well, this is Clarif's Iris de Tuscany 100 milliliter bottle. And this is their 50 milliliter bottle. It's the same shape, just a little bit smaller. So back in Photoshop, I'll just take this perfectly retouched 100 milliliter bottle, shrink it down in proportion to real life, and swap out the labels. I'll make some new bubbles that are a little bit different, and bam, two photos in one. And this is their bottle of their Pink Black Facial Serum, which is the same bottle and same color as their Pinot Noir Luminous Face Serum. And this is their Total Repair Emulsion, which is the same bottle and color photographically as their facial cream. And this is their Bergmont Cane Face Mask, which is, you know, pretty much the same as their Cumin Infused Body Cream. The products are different, but photographically, the bottles, the color, the shape, the size, it all looks the same. So now instead of taking individual photos for each and every one of Clarif 62 products and the time it would take to edit them all, now I just have to make a photo here, 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 and everywhere else there's a unique bottle type. And then swap out the labels with the other products that match the color and the bottle type. It's still a ton of work, but in the scope of the entire shoot, this is gonna save me a ton of time. Now, of course, there's a ton of bottles that are standouts, both in the color of the product and the shape and transparency of the bottle. So I have a lot more shots to take. The process for photographing the opaque bottles is similar to the transparent ones, but the lighting is completely different. Instead of backlighting them like I was before, I'm giving these new bottles a double side light. The key light is on the left hand side to give the bottle some nice shape, and the fill light is back behind the bottle to the right to create a nice little edge light. But because these are not transparent, I'm using a giant cut of this duvetine black fabric and the duvetine covered boxes just to block off all of these reflections of my studio that I'm getting on the front of my bottles. As with any shoot, the process or workflow that you have and the repeatability and consistency of that process is what's really gonna make or break your images. All of these photos are already up on the website, so if you wanna go see them in action, I'll put that link down in the description below, clarif.com. And this is not a sponsored post or anything, but hey, if you're there already checking out the photos, maybe support a friend of the channel and pick yourself up some of the, you know, really great natural skincare products. But hey, give it a like, subscribe, drop some of those comments down below. I'll try to get to them when I can. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Man, I need some more coffee.